Ja, ja, ich versuche nicht drauf zu achten, dann werde ich ja. ohnehin nur nervös jetzt. Good morning. We are, of course, live here from the Paris Motor Show. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the first of our EQ live talks. And uh, I've been joined by Christoph von Hugo, who is the manager of the driver assistance systems, uh, the safety assistance, um, something that we've been learning about for the last few years and has sort of become second nature to us. Tell us about what your actual role is. Well, uh, I'm... Uh heading a department that is uh, responsible for developing radar systems, radar systems which are basis for today's driver assistance systems. And of course we are working uh, closely with the guys that are developing uh, our road to autonomous driving. So our ultimate goal uh, mainly is to make these beautiful cars uh, be capable of actually driving you around town or driving you to your vacation. It's such an interesting topic. I cannot wait to have a chat with you. We've got a beautiful E-Class behind us. It, sound, it seems silly not to jump in. Shall we go? Let's you go. jump in the driver's seat. I'll meet you, I'll meet you in there. Yes, welcome. Isn't it gorgeous in here? Um, okay, so to begin with, we heard you there talking about autonomous driving. What's the difference between that and uh, automatized driving? Well, I, I think we generally just talk about uh, automated driving, uh, and there's different versions of automated driving, whether you're talking about parking, uh, self-parking cars, for example, uh, whether you're talking about cars driving on the highway. And of course, there's multiple levels of automation. Uh, in this E-Class today, for example, you've got a maximum of comfort uh, and support systems. Uh, we call them advanced driver assistance systems that help you, for example, to uh, accelerate the car, to decelerate the car, uh, imagine stop uh, and go traffic, and you basically don't have to do anything, but your car just keeps the distance to the vehicle in front of you and it just keeps you rolling through the traffic jam. Uh, it also helps you, in fact, to steer, so uh, you will feel a little uh, steering uh, inputs in the steering wheel. It just keeps the lane, it follows the car in front of you and it's really quite comfortable and especially on, on longer trips, it really relieves you from the tedious part of driving. And so that is today's part of automation. And now if we are thinking about where this might lead us, that uh, eventually means that in the future you'll have cars where you don't even have to have your hands on the steering wheel anymore, but, but maybe you can just take your hands off the steering wheel and imagine a traffic jam. You don't want to watch what's going on around you. You just want to maybe watch a movie on the head-up display or maybe you want to do your emails. And that's really what we are striving for. You'll actually look forward to being stuck in traffic jams, won't you? Oh. Of course, of course. Uh, actually, that's what, that's what we are doing today in engineering. We are looking for the traffic jams. We want to see how our cars work in traffic jams. But of course, we also want to, want to see how they, how they uh, work in, in flowing traffic. So, of course, we're talking about the car within itself. We've also heard that term car-to-car -car communication. Can you explain that a little bit more for us? Well, that's uh, also one of the enabling technologies uh, that allows for better driver assistance systems in the future and they will also play a role in, in highly uh, automated driving. Um, Imagine uh, we, we've got a lot of sensors in the car, radars, cameras, ultrasonic sensors. They are all helping us to monitor the environment and then uh, we, we fusion those inputs, those information that we get and from that we derive a good strategy how to assist the driver. Now some of those things that are dangerous to us maybe cannot be seen, uh, not even with a radar that has a range of, of 200, 250 meters. 
imagine you're, you're driving around a curve or over a hill and uh, you cannot see anything, your car cannot see anything, and that's where car-to-x communication comes into play. Um, so uh, imagine there's another uh, E-Class out there and it's, it's had an, an accident, maybe the airbags have popped out, uh, and of course that's a danger to other road users. So uh, in that instance, this car will automatically send an, uh, a message to our backend server, and from that backend server, this information will be shared with other vehicles in the surrounding area. So uh, what you can see right here, for example, if, if I'm driving around, uh, around uh, on the road and I'm seeing a danger, maybe a broken down vehicle inside the road, I just go in my navigation screen, uh, I push a button, uh, going down here, and I'm, I'm actually sending uh, a message to everybody else. The car says, thank you for informing other road users. And now I've, I've uh, pretty much sent a signal to everybody around so that they know when they are getting close to this point of, of uh, interest or this point of danger that they should slow down or uh, somehow adjust their driving uh, characteristics to this danger. It's so interesting. Th can you give us a little bit of an insight to where we are at the minute and what we can expect in the near future in terms of these assistance systems? Well, um, I think we've already come uh, quite far with what we call semi-automated driving, which means assisting the driver in, in everyday driving situations, but still having the driver at the responsibility to, to have his hands uh, on the steering wheel, to watch the surroundings. Uh, and I think uh, we can expect within the next four to five years to see vehicles where we actually allow the driver to take the hands out of the steering wheel, uh, at least in certain situations, let's say a traffic jam, um, to allow the driver to uh, you know, relax a little bit more. And imagine you're having a, a four, five, six hundred kilometer drive and you have parts in, in between in, in a traffic jam, for example, where you can just relax. That means you need less brakes, you probably arrive uh, quicker, and in fact, you'll arrive much more relaxed. And that is really where we are heading uh, in the next, uh, as I said, four to five years. Now, one of the um, big issues that personally I think about and a lot of people ask me about is where we're crossing over those safety elements. So. You don't want the driver to obviously become distracted or too relaxed. How do you approach that? How do you work around that subject? That's actually something we, we think about very early in, uh, in the development uh, phase of our vehicles or of our systems. Uh, very early in what we call the concept phase, we already talk to customers, to normal drivers, and we let them drive these systems in driving simulators and see how they work with these systems. And uh, sometimes it's, it's a very uh, narrow gap between do they understand how a system works or don't they understand it. And that's really where we focus on when we start developing the systems. Um, we don't do what the engineers can do, uh, but we do what the customers can deal with and what helps the drivers. Uh, that is really our approach. Uh, so for example, if you take our drive pilot in the current E-Class, which is an automated function helping you with steering, accelerating, braking, um, we've, we've tested it with many customers in the driving simulator, but also on, on public roads later in the development process. And, and we've, we've learned how we need to develop the algorithms so that the driver has a maximum comfort benefit of the system, but doesn't start to rely on it too much. And it works very well. And how are you finding people accepting this? Because you'll obviously have drivers in their mindset that want to be in charge. Are you finding that people are actually becoming quite accustomed to these assistance systems? I think people uh, are uh, very, well, they, they know what the system can do, but they also know what it can't do. And they know when they want to drive sporty, if you are on an ocean road or so, uh, you'll probably not use your drive pilot. You'll, you you want to drive yourself. But then there's other situations, basically on your daily commute to work, where you want to have a maximum of relief. And you, you don't want to arrive at work already sweaty. You, you want to enjoy your, your ride to work. And that's where people engage the drive pilot and have a maximum of comfort and relief. Um, uh, also on longer trips, for example. So people um, uh, really choose between the situations where the system uh, makes sense and where they choose to drive manually. And we still want to want to keep this, uh, this uh, possibility for the drivers. We know that people that buy our cars buy them to drive them. Uh, and not to be driven all the time. Uh, so our, our cars are designed in a way that driving them is still a lot of fun, but some situations are just not fun to drive, and that's where our driver assistance systems come in. So let's talk about what systems uh, already come as standard in the Mercedes vehicles. 
We actually have um, a radar as a standard in all of our vehicles. So if you're looking around here, there's, there's not a single vehicle here that doesn't have a radar as standard equipment. Uh, and what this radar does, it's, uh, is it's monitoring the vehicles in front uh, and helps the driver to prevent um, head-to-tail accidents. So if you're driving in too closely to the vehicle in front of you, the car will warn you uh, with a beeping sound, uh, with, with a visual uh, warning, and if drivers actually don't react to that warning, then the car can actually brake itself. And that is, uh, has become standard on, on all of our cars. Uh, and uh, as we uh, speak, we are, of course, enhancing those systems. So in the current E-Class, uh, the system does not only monitor other vehicles, but it also monitors pedestrians. So imagine us sitting in this uh, beautiful E-Class, driving uh, through a city, and suddenly there's a pedestrian running across the street and you may be not paying attention in that particular second but your vehicle will pay attention and it, it will warn you and uh, if it's necessary even start braking autonomously. Christoph, thank you so much for gi giving us a, uh, an insight there and joining us for our first live talk on Facebook. Uh, make sure you join us a little bit later on. We'll be, um, we'll be here throughout the day. In fact, we're here all weekend. So make sure you stay tuned to the Facebook page and look out for more of our live talks. We'll see you soon.